Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by Deep, and I'm here to show you a card inside today. Now, I know most people focus on the outside of cards, but nobody really shows you how they decorate the insides, and that's what I want to be doing, and that's what I want to be known for. And it's what I tend to call cards inside and out. So this is the card inside that I'm going to be focusing on today. As you can see, it's got a nice bit of elements in there, just as much as you would put on the front, but enough room that you have a space to write your message. Now here's the card front, and what I'm going to be doing is linking to that first video that I posted on how I did the front, if you're curious about that. But right now I'm going to focus on the inside here. So instead of having this plain old white, I'm going to add this ivory colored paper from hammer mill it's just printer paper so 24 pound paper it's not cardstock so it's not going to bulk up your card too much and me i'm lazy i don't like measuring so what i'm going to do here is just mark the center of my card and the edges so i can sort of get a little bit of a border here and what i'll do is i'll cut that out on my paper cutter and the reason why I don't really measure too much is that I'm from Canada and here we work on the metric system. I grew up with the metric system and everything in the US is done in inches. It's, you can get used to it, but it's not the easiest. So here I am putting that card insert on the inside and you can see there's a bit of a border. Now I'm gonna be using the Simon Says Stamp Elizabeth background stamp that I used on the front to stamp on the inside. And that little gray piece of card there with the stamp already on it is actually from the front. So it's a scrap and I'm using it here on the inside. Now this is some Versafine Smoky Gray ink and I'm using that same stamp on the inside and positioning it and sort of stamping it on there nice and well. So I get a nice clear image. Now because this is pigment ink, it's gonna stay wet for a while. So what I'm gonna do is add some embossing on top of it, some heat embossing. This is Ranger Holographic Embossing Powder. It's a really nice powder. It goes on clear, so it picks up the color underneath it, but it has a bit of a glitter to it, as you can see here from the powder itself. So it gives you that bit of a holographic look, as you can see as I'm drying it. And it's important to note that this is paper, not cardstock. So you have to be careful when heating it, and that's why I heat from the back, to prevent it from burning. This is a bit of a Swiffer wipe here that I'm using to clean up my area and any excess powder on my card insert. And there you go, you have that beautiful holographic shine. Now I decided that it wasn't enough just to have that image on the side of the card so I wanted to put a little bit of it on the edge the bottom right corner so here I am doing that and heat embossing it again now as you can see it's just enough so that it gives it a bit more interest however it's not too much that you don't have enough space to put a sentiment on the inside or add a message so there you go Next up, I'm going to be using the Altony Floral Fantasy stamp set. Now I was stamping out other leaf images, but I'm going to use this one here with the Altony Minty Mint and Sweet Lids inks. Now this one actually does not have a second layer to it, so I'm going to be using that trick where you ink up the edges to create a second layer. But these two colors I find are very nice and they're from a new release from, from the latest release of inks from Altony. I really recommend getting them. So here you can see I'm stamping that second layer, so to speak. And you can see it adds a bit more depth, giving you the final product here. Here's the Altony Floral Fantasy 3D die set. So this is that leaf image there that I want to die cut out. I don't actually have the corresponding dies for the actual Floral Fantasy stamp set. So I figured this would work just as well. I'm using my washi tape here to position my die over top of my image. It's a little hard because it is the 3D die. It's not uh, open so you can see where your image is. So as you can see, I get two cutouts here. One is pretty good right on and the other one's a little off, but I figured, hey, it's okay. It's just the card inside. And here I'm stamping another floral image um, from the Vintage Roses set. This I used on the front of the card. And I'm using that same line of inks the, from the Warm and Cozy line, the Sun-Kissed Orange Cream and Autumn Blaze inks. 
And there you have your final flower. So I'll fussy cut this flower out just like I did the others. And there you see it with the other image that I previously stamped. And these are the two sets from the Hellebore Builder set. And there are my leaf images. So these are my elements, as I call them, that I'm going to be adding to the inside. I'm now using Tombow Permanent Adhesive to attach that gray piece to the inside. I'm going to match it up as well as I can to that stamped image. And as you can see, it's not exact. But this stamp is intricate enough that you don't notice too much. So it's not a huge deal. Maybe next time be a little careful lining up my stamps. But hey, what can you do? You live and you learn. So I'm going to cut off those pieces hanging over the edge here. And what I'll do is attach my insert to the inside of my card now. I'm going to be using that uh, tape runner again. And what I'll do is attach it to one side. And I'll line it up on my card base. And then I'll add more tape and attach it, attach the other side. And it will just sort of line up by itself. Here we go. Now I have to work on the center fold. So I'm taking my scoring tool here and I'm using it to sort of help create the fold here. It's very important to be careful doing this because you don't want to get any, in, any creases on that insert that you just put in. And I'm sort of making my fold more prominent here. And as you can see, I got a bit of a crease, but I figured it was okay enough to work with. So here I'm arranging my elements how I think I want them. And at first I was going to use that tape runner, but I figured these are too intricate. So I decided to use the Tombow Mono Multi-Purpose Liquid Glue. This, because it is liquid glue, gives you a bit of ease so that you can sort of move your image around a little bit before the glue actually dries, especially when you're adding more than one die cut. I, help, I find that this one's very useful. So here I am adding my elements to the top left corner. Those are the Hellebore flowers. As I said, those were stamped in the first video, which you can see below, from the link below, sorry. And there's the bottom corner. Now this is not enough for me. I have to go a step further, and that means embellishments. So I'm gonna add these pearl dots and small gem stickers. Now these are important to note, they're from the dollar store. They're only $1.25 each. So, I mean, look at the amount you're getting in that pack, it's just, it's crazy. It's just a huge deal. And if you're in Canada, I recommend finding a, a dollar store that has these and then just stock up like crazy. That's what I did. So I added a couple of the pearl dots to the center of the hellebore flowers and those gems I just sort of added, you know, around my corner images. Um, there's a mix of bigger gems and smaller ones just for interest. And there you have the, the inside of my card. Very simple, very easy, and it just ties in your front of your card to the inside. It doesn't take that long at all. Anyways, I hope you guys like my video, and if you did, please take that extra time to just subscribe, and I promise you I'm going to give you some great videos that will show you insides of cards that you've never seen before. If you have a chance, please visit my blog. You'll see it at uh, designsbyd.blogspot.com. And once again, thank you for viewing and I hope to see you back. Bye.